y'all. Welcome to Geek Week. I shaved the side of my head again, or I went to the salon and had somebody shave it down for me. For school purposes, it's back down to one now. It's really short, but my hair grows really fast. In like a week, you're not even going to be able to see my scalp. So, have a couple things to cover. Let's get down to it. I need, need, need to talk about the Bridges of Madison County musical. It is my mom's favorite movie, the Meryl Streep and Clint Eastwood movie, and I basically grew up hearing her talk about this movie, and so as soon as I was old enough, I watched it myself, and I understood it's such a good movie. I didn't realize they were making it into a musical until I went to see Once in January with my dad, and it was actually the theater right next to Once's theater, so I saw the marquee and my first thought was like, oh my god, I have to tell my mom because like it's our favorite Meryl Streep movie. <laughs> it was nominated for a couple of Tonys, but I didn't pay that much attention to the Tony nominated shows this year. I didn't do that much research. I don't know. So last week I used the power of YouTube to download three soundtracks. It was the last five years, If Then, and Bridges of Madison County. Uh, if Then is the Adina Menzel one. And I've listened to it all the way through, once or twice, but it hasn't really thrilled me, hasn't really caught my attention for the most part. It was by the same folks who did Next to Normal, which is one of my all-time favorite scores. So I don't know if my expectations were too high. The last five years I'm glad I got because anything with Norbert Leo Butts is top-notch in my book. And they're doing a film of it with Anna Kendrick and Jeremy Jordan. Uh, so I wanted to know a little bit more about it before it came out. And I think Anna and Jeremy are both going to sound amazing on some of these songs. But the star of the show, of the soundtracks that I downloaded, is far and away the Bridges of Madison County. Steve Pasqua and Kelly O'Hare are powerhouse vocalists. And the score is so perfect for showing that off. Some of these notes that Steve hits... There's, there's one in his last song, actually. I see Jesus. I was listening to the last song that he sings, It All Fades Away. Um, I was listening to it in bed a couple of nights ago, and I had literal chest pains <laughs> listening to his beautiful voice. It was, it's, it's a lot. It, it moves me. Um, there are also a few numbers that feature other members of the cast that I really enjoy. The ones that feature Francesca's family have some really charming little sound bites in them. And there's one featured number that is sung by Robert's ex-wife that's one of my favorites, called Another Life. It's such an exquisitely crafted score. I am so in love. I'm so in love. I've done my research and so much work and so much creative genius went into this musical and to me it really shows. What I'm upset about is that I have fallen in love with this show and it got fucking shafted on Broadway. They opened February 20th of this year and they closed on May 18th. It only ran for 137 performances. I heard that it just wasn't bringing tourists in, which is like so confusing because the movie is very popular and the music is so good. The good news is they are getting a tour together and the Providence Performing Arts Center gets a lot of national tours from the Broadway shows. For whatever reason, we actually get a lot of premieres of the Broadway shows. They like open the national tours in Providence. It won't be happening until next year. There's no information on the website yet regarding casting or dates or anything like that. But fingers crossed because if it comes to PPAC, I will be going with my mother, come hell or high water. Changing gears a little bit here. I also saw Guardians of the Galaxy twice since it opened. Pretty freaking amazeballs. It's fun, there's awesome special effects, and it is delightfully irreverent. I like how it didn't take itself seriously at all. Groot is my baby. I was unexpectedly charmed by Dave Bautista as Drax. Chris Pratt is, you know, Chris Pratt. He's always delightful. Karen Gillan and Zoe Saldana as the most significant female characters were both really great. 
I definitely could do with more installments in the franchise, but without getting too heavily into a rant here, if we can do a talking raccoon and a sentient tree, I'm pretty sure we can throw in a few people of color and some more women without alienating our audience. Yes. Yes. The other movie I saw the same day as the second time I saw Guardians was The Hundred Foot Journey. It wasn't terrible. It was a great cast, uh, but it was way too long, at least 20 minutes too long. And the pacing throughout, especially towards the end, was really loopy. It would cover three years in five minutes and then stop for a five minute scene, and yeah. I did find out during the previews for that movie that they're doing a second Best Exotic Marigold Hotel, which is super exciting because the first one was insanely good. Um, that is what I have for you this week. I know it was only two things. Doctor Who is happening tomorrow. I've been wanting to film this vlog for like three days and proof positive I wrote these notes on Tuesday and it is now Friday and I have been <laughs> trying for a couple of days to find a good time to film. So yay, when I wrote this it said Doctor Who is happening Saturday. Doctor Who is happening tomorrow. Come to me Peter Capaldi, I'm waiting for you. I might do something for that on this channel. Um, I also moved back into school on the 31st, so that's kind of crazy. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching my face cry about musicals like the geek that I am. Bye.